So now I have taken my embroidery design out of the hoop and we're gonna get started on the decorative stitching like we've done on our finished project here. We're gonna be sewing different decorative stitches built into the machine on each of the seam lines from where we put our crazy quilt block together. And I am so super excited because we have two features on the machine that make crazy patch quilting so much faster and easier and I can't wait to show you. One of them is the guide beam that we were using before when we were doing our initial piecing of the crazy patch block. And the second feature that we're gonna to get to play with is the sensor pen. So if you haven't had an opportunity to try that out and see how it works, now is the time. I've prepared my machine for sewing again. I've removed the embroidery unit, put my accessory compartment back on, and I've got my end presser foot on. This is the proper foot to use when you're doing decorative stitching. It's not your standard J foot, but your end presser foot. And now we're ready to select a decorative stitch. So here I am on the home screen, and I'm going to select Utility and Decorative Stitches. And I'm going to come up to here to Character Decorative Stitches. And there are absolutely tons of decorative stitches built into the Unity. I'll select category number seven and this little feather stitch here. This is such a great opportunity for you to play with some of the built-in decorative stitches on your machine. So for this short little feather stitch, I'm going to utilize two of the features of the machine to help me sew perfectly on my stitching line. First, I'm going to activate that guide beam so that I can have that nice little guide beam showing on my fabric to make sure I'm stitching straight. And then I'm gonna activate the automatic tie-off and trim. By touching the scissors icon on my screen, it turns on an automatic tie-off, so when I stop stitching, it will tie off my stitches and then cut my threads for me as well. I can place my fabric right under my foot, perfectly align that guide beam right on my seam where I want to stitch, lower my presser foot, and I'm ready to sew. So what just happened there was when I got right to the end of my stitching, I touched the reverse key on my machine here, and that's how I was able to tell the machine that I wanted it to stop right then, tie off my stitch, and trim my threads. Now again, that's called the automatic tie off and trim feature, and that is one really helpful way to make sure you get absolutely perfect stitching on your line. Now I've got another really cool feature I'm going to show you for a larger decorative stitch. So now I've gone into menu six of the character and decorative stitches and selected number 25. It's kind of this large X, which to me looks a lot like a hand stitch. And here on screen, it's telling me, it's showing me what the stitch looks like at 100% full size. So you can see that this is a very large directional stitch. Now to stay straight and to have the stitch stop exactly at the end of my seam, I'm now going to activate my sensor pen. I get a menu of some different choices here, and this right here with the blue arrow pointing to the end is what's going to allow me to pinpoint a specific spot on my fabric for the machine to stop stitching. Now I can position my stitching line right in place. I've still got my guide beam activated so that I can see exactly where it will be stitching. And with the tip of my sensor pen, I'm going to touch the end of my seam and the machine will recalculate the way that it's going to stitch that stitch and it's telling me that it will stitch approximately 154.7 millimeters or just over six inches. And now I'll touch okay and I'm ready to lower my presser foot and begin stitching. Now you can probably see that as I'm stitching this stitch, my fabric is moving side to side a lot. You see that guide beam is moving off of the center point quite a bit. This is a very wide stitch with a lot of lateral movement. It's just so cool that we can stitch these stitches. My goal as I'm stitching is to keep this parallel to my stitching line. And there is a forward motion in this stitch. And I'm just trying to make sure that when it does those couple of straight stitches forward, that my guide beam stays toward the center. But just keeping that guide beam nice and parallel to my seam line on either side is going to help me to stay straight as I stitch.
Now the machine has stopped all on its own because it's asking me just to reconfirm my ending point. It says, hey, we've been stitching for quite a while. Let's just double check and make sure that we've got the proper ending point. So with my sensor pen, once again, I'm gonna touch the ending point. It's recalibrating how much it's going to continue stitching. And now I can touch okay once again and continue my row of stitching. Now I'll touch my scissor button, I'll lift my presser foot, I can remove my fabric, and I have a perfect ending point. I encourage you to play with some of those gorgeous stitches built into your machine. Now I do think it's a good idea to test each stitch on a scrap of fabric just to see how the stitch is going to create itself and to get an idea of when you should be pushing that stop button. So utilize those couple of tools that I showed you and just continue stitching.